Great relationships don't just happen. If you want one, you've got to make it yourself. But how do you do that when you didn't have the models and examples that you needed? Some of us were lucky enough to have seen one or two solid marriages growing up. But that's not really enough since what worked for them isn't necessarily going to work for you. And lots of us just started doing marriage and love and relationships the way we thought was expected. Only to find ourselves in a love story that's, I don't know, okay, I guess? There's no right one right way to do love. That's good news. You can let go of all that old baggage and craft a marriage or partnership or chosen family or polycule or whatever that is so much more than okay. It's really the creation of a life that finally feels like home. At least that's what doing this has felt like for me. Me too. And getting here wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for us. We learned the hard way, the very hard way, that love is a verb. And the actions of love don't just come naturally. We all need skills and tools and support to do this well. And that's completely normal. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton, research psychologist and ASEC certified sexuality educator. I'll be sharing personal stories, evidence-based research, and case studies from my work as a relationship coach. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Um, I'm a human doing my best to make relationships my biggest priority in life. We're going to dig deep and offer vulnerable conversations between us as we keep learning how to customize our love and keep growing as individuals. As individuals. As individuals. And as a couple. And as a moresome. It's all very interesting. And we're also going to have some amazing, nuanced conversations with experts who can help you learn more ways to design the life you want. And if you find yourself saying at any point, damn, I really needed to hear that while you're listening, I would love it, we would love it, if you would head over and give us a quick rate and review on iTunes. It really does help other people find us, and we'd be so grateful for that. Now, it's time to reimagine your relationship from the ground up. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. Hey, so... Hello, everybody. Here we are. Here, yes. In the summer of, of uh, guesting episodes. Hot guest summer. Hot guest summer, if you will. Yes. The reason this is hot guest summer is because I managed to find a whole bunch of people who I am thrilled to share with our audience yeah. and have some different conversations. Um, Ken and I are going to be taking the podcast that you're listening to in a new direction in the fall a little bit. Um, and I think everybody's going to be really excited about uh, I it. I think so. It's gonna You'll be, hear a little bit more gonna about that soon. But um, yeah, be on the lookout. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we have uh, we have these great episodes that were recorded. Some with just me, some with both mm -hmm. of us, and this week is definitely uh, it's blockbuster. Um, we have Alana Pratt, or I did. So yeah, I you have Alana Pratt. you have a conversation <laughs> with Alana Pratt. I did not. Yeah, well, I was thrilled. So I was on Alana Pratt's um, podcast, and she and I just totally gelled the second we we popped onto each other's screen and we just like got it and the irony there is our stance on relationships if you were just to look at it on paper it looks so different because I'm all about you know helping people transition from monogamy to non-monogamy I'm about helping people see um, intimacy in this really expansive big way and maybe undo some of the programming from earlier times and Alana really does focus on helping people find the one and keep the one, right? Okay, so that's... Uh, on paper. It, it looks like a different approach, but it's... Yeah, but wait till you hear the out, conversation. Turns out the conversations are so can really you, well aligned. Yeah, you just reviewed the mm -hmm. conversation that yeah. she and I had. And would you say, if you ha didn't hear what I just said, okay, would you say that um, she and I have different perspectives on love? No, I wouldn't have said that at all. Not right. at all. I think that's possibly one of the most important parts about what we're doing on this particular podcast is that this isn't about us proselytizing polyamory or non-monogamy. Right. I, I, if you like monogamy and you're into it and it is working for you and your partner, 
go forth and prosper. Yeah, it's it's proselytizing, you know, good relationships, <laughs> right. successful ones according to your goals. And what I have found is that for many people, the thing that's unspoken is that they actually want more expansive connections, whether that is sexual or whether that is deep, intimate friendships, or whether that means taking your relationship to yourself with yourself right. super seriously and really prioritizing that in a way that monogamous relationships often don't, or at least we're told they're not we're supposed told to. They're not. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't care how many people you want to sleep with. That is not my concern. My concern is that you get to create the relationship that you mean to have. Yes, right. And that you get to keep letting it evolve and grow as you evolve and grow. Because I believe in in, in individuation. I believe that we are all in the process of becoming more and more ourselves. So your relationship and and that's how to handle that. The, um, going over the episode, that's one of the places you line up. That's not the language she used in the episode, but it's uh, you no. Know, Getting into your your whole all yourself yeah. and understanding who you are so that you can go find the people who feel that, you know, who, who like that. Who like that. So that made me think of, so you and I have not been getting along the last few we days. We have not. We have not been getting along. Um, and I say that and I kind of laugh because it, in many ways it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, we don't need to like each other all the time to be, be deeply committed, to be loving, to be careful with each other to the degree that we can in any moment. Our relationship goals and agreement don't include liking each other all the time. It's not part of the, the, Which the deal. Which is good news for both of us Which right is good now. news right in this moment. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm laughing because, I mean, I think one of the pieces of feedback I get from listeners... And clients who work with me who then listen to the podcast or people who come to um, my, my live trainings and workshops and retreats and such. Um, people imagine that our relationship is some sort of, um, like, goal to aspire to. Yeah. No. It's not, You want to have your own. You got to have your own. You got to pick out your own goals. And, and ours is messy too. Oh, yeah. It just is. And we've talked about it, but I think a lot of times we talk about it as if it was messy, but now we've achieved this. Yeah, that's not that's how this bullshit. works. <laughs> yes, just that's bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> because in fact, there is no individuation if you've decided that you've individuated. There <laughs> Yeah. The second right. either one of us the says, "Great, we've achieved." That has happened to me over and over in little things. Not like, oh, I'm done. I am now a person, a full person. It's not like that. But little things like, oh, I've been struggling with this. Ah, I'm, I am I think that I've, I've achieved completeness on this struggle. And then immediately it comes back. Nailed it. <laughs> as soon as you say nailed yeah, it. Yeah, nailed like, it. I got that. Oh, oh, now it's it just climbed up to my back and is throttling me. This is So this is beautiful. I have been learning... How to take seriously Jung's um, notion of complexes, right? So complexes mm -hmm. are just like sticky spots on our soul that they just, like we have an original imprint and then we just sort of like, it's like we're walking through the, the forest of life, picking up burrs on right. our socks in, in the same particular place over and over and then the burrs get burrs and then you get this like energy spot that's just sticky and gross and I've been studying a little bit more Buddhism and, you know, it reminds me of the notion of samskaras and how we just we get these patterns and they just, mm -hmm. ugh. But I love what Jung said about them and I, it feels helpful to me in this moment. We're not trying to resolve them. Right. We're not trying to solve them and be rid of them because a person without complexes is called a dead person yeah right like that right. that's the energy flow so we want we can want to be able to work with the patterns in productive ways in ways that feel um energetically satisfying mm -hmm. or just to be able to observe them without i've been practicing just observing the fact that i have a pattern that i don't like without trying to fix it and just being like oh there it is interesting huh interesting and that process of of coming to grips with the fact that 
it's not going to be done. Yep. It's not going to be done. <sighs> and one of the things that I learned from you, and you learned from all of your studies, is that, yeah, we, we don't get rid of them. We can't get rid of them, but we don't want to because they are they're how the energy moves in us. And like you said, if there weren't any, the energy wouldn't move. And that's when you said, yeah, with no moving energy, you got a dead person there. Right. And, and so, I don't want to be a dead person, but sometimes... And we don't have to be talking literally. We can nope, be just psychologically... Psychologically inert. Dead. Numb. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I'm not looking for that. Me either. But sometimes... Okay. Sometimes yesterday... <laughs> some, some, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I... At like one thirty. I look at you or I look at me and I look at... I, I'm going to use you as an example here. Here I am. Because I was all kinds of hostile about this yesterday. I was witnessing a part a part of you acting like you just you could not show up and be present yeah. for the parts of me that were out acting even though you had volunteered to and there's there's the trick there's you the trick put I'm... yourself in the position of like yep. hey I'll be here for you and then and then oh, you couldn't and you and got you, you just went all silent and, and I wasn't went, and yep, yep. And, and and I this almost never happens to me well everybody just got a little bling <laughs> Okay, so computers make noises. Um, I had a time that doesn't happen to me often. I went a little nonverbal, or maybe a lot nonverbal. I just lost my capacity for words for like 45 minutes, maybe longer. And I couldn't ask for what I needed. And in... In the moment, we were both really caught in our own complexes. Yep, you had you had yours, and then I responded and to not just yours. that, but other things and, that led up to it. And then, and there's the thing in relationships, our our complexes they set each other off. Like it's mm -hmm. part of why we're in a relationship. It's part of the yeah. entanglement that we have. Is your stuff lights up my stuff, and your stuff reminds me of all the damn work I still have to do on myself. Ditto. It is cluttered in here, mm -hmm. man. It is cluttered. And so I, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible because part of me doesn't want to share this stuff. Part of me really wants to just get to be the expert and, mm -hmm. and not share this. But again, calling bullshit on that because there's always going to be work to there, do inside. There is, yeah. And, and between us. And one of our our North Star is growth over comfort. <laughs> but it's hard sometimes. It's it really is, hard. Yeah, um, it is hard. So coming back to what the conversation I had with Alana, you know, I was thinking about how she was talking about having a relationship with yourself yep. first. Yeah. And yesterday, the thing that stuck out to me was I couldn't relate to myself. So I was locked inside because I couldn't like I, mm -hmm. I was I was like locked in a room with myself alone and it was I did not like it. And that led me to want to project all this stuff all over you and say, why are you fixing it? Yep. And I had offered to help in those moments. And then and then it lit up your stuff. too. It, and then I didn't help. I, in fact, I did. But you tried. But it didn't work because I, you also got yeah, into your stuff. Yeah, because I got into my stuff. And this, by the way, is why we have these patterns in our relationships of of the, why are we having the same argument? Why is this fight the same as the last fight? Because this isn't the first time this has happened with us. Bing, bing, bing. And it happens with all of us because we have a... a a set of things we know about ourselves. There's these complexes. And maybe we know, maybe we don't, but they're in there. And when this particular set interacts, you find yourself in the same fight. Right. And these these patterns, so like the Gottmans talk about these these um, perpetual arguments, yeah. right? Like this is this is a very widely discussed concept. But I'm noticing that when I when I'm living it, I don't give a damn. How widely discussed it is. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I, I don't care who's talking about this. I don't care that everybody told me it was going to be like this, it including sucks. my mama. Mama told me. Yeah. Uh, she did, yeah. But it really does suck. And one of the things that feels impossible in the moment is to remember that it won't feel exactly like this. And I'm, I'm better at remembering that inside myself. Like, mm -hmm. I know my feelings will change. But sometimes I forget that, in fact, our relational pattern, the, the fight we have, the one that feels perpetual, we're having the same fight, yeah. 
In fact, it's not the same. Oh, and that's good news and right. bad news, right? Like the on the on the negative side, yeah. like oh, we're all sad. Is yet we're locked in what seems like the same pattern ha- playing out over and over. We're fighting about the same thing, and so therefore now I can look back over the course of our relationship and say, see, right. we always do this, yeah. or worse, I can say, see, you always do this. Mm-hmm. But on the upside, it's not actually the same. It's colored by everything we're doing. And so recently, I've been making a practice of letting myself observe these stuck patterns without trying to change or fix. I'm a bit of a doer. I don't know whether people have noticed that. <laughs> you are. You're, you're, you're a doer. So I've been practicing just being with them. And what I notice is in our relationship, that's the place where I struggle the most to just let them be. Um. So yesterday was good practice. Yeah. And it didn't work terribly well. It, it didn't. It, but here it was we are. A, I mean, yep. We're okay. I mean, I went for a walk at, uh, I don't know, 11 p.m. Last, last night. night. I yeah. wandered through. Luckily, we live in this beautiful place with fields. And I was just out walking, wondering if I was going to run into our local bear, Bobbert. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he's a black bear. He's perfectly lovely. Yeah. Um, we we uh, named him Bobbert. I like him. Um, I did, but I was just out, I went out for the walk. I walked up and down the field four times, which means I probably walked about a mile or so. Mm-hmm. And then I took a cold shower, the coldest shower I could think of. Cause all I could think is, okay, it's 95 degrees out. So I'm hot and I'm sweaty. But also I was thinking about something. One of my mentors, um, Jess Rhodes, she was working with one of my other mentors, Elizabeth Kristoff, and they were talking about the benefits of regulating the nervous system through a cold plunge. And I could have run into the river, but I didn't actually want to deal with getting down into the river. Right. And honestly, it probably wasn't as cold right now as the water coming out of the tub. It's true. So I turned on the cold water and I said, okay, this isn't about punishment. I'm just going to get in and notice that I can be present here in my body while experiencing this cold water and it'll be okay. And I stood there for three minutes and it was cold. And I was fine. And you were fine. And, in, and physiologically, also I was experiencing a change. I was cooling down. I was feeling differently in my body now. And I felt different. And so when I got out of the shower, it felt good. I felt like I could be the person I wanted to be next to you. And then and I then opened my started. mouth. <laughs> and it all... <laughs> it was not for naught, but it really no, it knocked was, you back quite it a wasn't, few times. It was not for naught, but it so was sorry funny about how... That. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I self-regulated. I found my center again. But I hadn't found our relational center. Uh-huh. You I found your center. Right. Which is good. I mean, that you can... So you came back and I was like, whoop! <laughs> oh, no, not this guy again. <laughs> and thus the problem of right now, yeah. living in a tent... Yep. Our house is not finished. It's nearing. We're starting to get close. Um, there wasn't any place else to go right. in that moment. Yeah. I mean, I, there just wasn't. It was 95 degrees at night, and it, there just wasn't anywhere to go. And so we laid next to each other, and we slept. And we tried to shut up. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't, wasn't easy. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, Shutting going up. to bed angry is fine. It is. It's fine. You're not going to be better. I used to, I used to fight. I used to fight it out till the end. Which has taken till two or three in the morning, which doesn't make the next morning. And you know, all that I start better. to devolve and you yeah, start and to devolve. Yep. Like we're tired and now we're yeah. And Nothing now good you ever wake happens up the, at two AM. That's Ted Mosby that. said. Ted Mosby said Ted Mosby's mom said. That's right. <laughs> right? So we um we have learned that it's okay to go to bed angry. Yep. And, and that, that's so not I easy. I went to bed either. angry last night. I mean night. it's it is unsatisfying. But sometimes that doesn't matter. It doesn't. And and there's the thing. I actually went to bed angry, mostly at myself, because I couldn't figure out how to fix the problem. And I'm the fixer here. So I wanted to fix it, and I couldn't. And when I woke up, nothing was fixed. Yep. So here I am. Right. It, what I'm noticing is, maybe it doesn't have to be, because I already know. I woke up, and I still, I choose you. And I choose me. So we're doing this together, and the this right now is... Ugh. Yeah, right. And so and that's that's how it is sometimes. Sometimes it's ugh. And I knew we needed to record this and I was like, I'm not going to talk about it. Which meant of course I was going to talk about it because that's what I do to myself. 
I so, like to set myself little challenges. Yeah, challenge accepted. <laughs> I, yeah. Speaking of Ted Mosby. I might inter, my inner fuckery. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, wow. Well, um, I'm, I'm impressed with you that you, that you did share it. Because, yeah, you said, no, I don't want to talk about this. But the thing is, we all do it. We all. It's a part of all of our lives. Whether it's with yourself or with partners. Right. We so, get stuck. We get stuck. And... What is now, the only thing I know is what is now will not be. Right. That's it. It's really all there is. So, you know, Alana's, the, the conversation I had with Alana went exactly to these places of like, how do I know myself mm-hmm, first mm-hmm. so that I can relate? Yeah. How can I get to know myself so that I can choose people, so I can choose partners, whether you want to choose the one or you want to choose the one for tonight, I don't care. <laughs> but yeah, and how do I choose someone to share myself with without knowing myself? And one of the things I saw in the episode is, yep, so you two are aligned in so many ways. You do this part of it completely differently. Well, I mean, completely, but you have significant differences in how you approach finding out about yourself and right. growing and learning. So there's as many ways to do that as there are people. Yeah. So, yep, you're going to find Use, your own find path. Your way. Okay. So without further ado, let me introduce Alana Pratt. Uh, she's an intimacy expert, a global media personality, and a go-to authority for those who've suffered heartbreak and are ready to live unapologetically and attract an open-hearted ideal relationship. She's been chosen as an icon of influence. Um, She's a columnist for the Good Men Project and has been featured on Huffington Post, People Magazine, Forbes, CBS, ABC, Fox, and more. She is everywhere, people. Um, She's an Ivy League grad, an author of six books. She's interviewed some amazing names, so I feel really lucky to be counted amongst her interviewees, (laughs) too. We'll link that podcast where I appeared on her show because she's interviewed people like Alanis Morissette and Whoopi Goldberg. Um... Her podcast is called Intimate Conversations. You're going to want to check that out, too. But first, let's talk to her. Um, Alana is the creator of Heartmates, and she's here to help people know how to have an intimate relationship with themselves first so that they'll naturally attract and enhance their ideal partnerships. So, Sounds great. Let's give that a listen. Uh, Alana, thank you so much for joining me to get to have you on the show. I'm really excited. So thank you. And I just love, you know, this, I'm sure we can only go as deep as the listener. And so I love that you are deep (laughs) right out of the gate. So we're going to go deep for everyone else. And it is a blessing for me because all that I want to say can be received. And, uh, for that, I'm grateful. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. So when I was getting myself familiar with your work and I was thinking about what would be the direction we could go, what I noticed is honestly, you like me, you like intimacy, you like to talk about connection. And so I knew we could go any direction, but I was thrilled with the idea of talking about getting back out there, dating, connecting with people, trying to figure out what it is we want. Mm -hmm. So I would love if you could just start us off by, by saying, why do you do what you do? Why, why does this matter to you? My audience knows why it matters to me. Why does it matter to you? Yeah. I don't know about you and how you grew up, but I did not feel seen in who I am. And I felt like maybe a quarter of who I am, maybe half of who I am was, and now then I was just too much. And so I, I felt like what's wrong with me How do I need to pretzel myself into something else so that I can finally just connect? And then when I finally stop looking on the outside to try to get that, you know, two divorces and all the rest of it, the only one in common, that would be me. So I'm like, okay, so let's go, let's go the other direction. Let's go on the inside and have this depth of connection. And what I discovered were a lot of parts of myself that I was ashamed of and insecure about. And just, I mean, I'm a cum laude graduate of an Ivy League school, authored this. And I mean, you'd think I would have it together, but oh my <laughs> God, hardly. And as I began, and I'll call it like fall madly with my wobbly parts, just as mm. much as my amazing parts. And I made space for all of me and I stopped resisting. It was an incredibly deep spiritual awakening. I was, I, I literally had this moment where I, I know it doesn't really work like this, but I pretended that God and the goddess were sitting there 
And I couldn't even look them in the eye. I was so ashamed that I wasn't good enough and they probably judged me. And all. And then finally through various practices and I do quantum psychology work and spiritual technology work and just dance movement. I do all this, all the things, all the things, all the things. One day in my meditation, I imagined I looked them in the eye. Mm. They immediately were just like, we've been waiting, but we can't do it to you. You have free will when you're ready to be unabashedly, unapologetically, here I am, the good, the bad, the ugly, you meet the all. And I imagine in my mind's eye, scotch and cigars, and <laughs> like we're partying, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm home. I don't need to like try to be anybody other than I am. And this connection with self expanded into connection with my body and my sexuality, expanded in connection with like all these direct experiences with the divine and, and just a courage to explore life and deep connections. And what I began to notice is I began to repel shallow surface mm -hmm. situations, people, clients, lovers. And I began to attract this depth. And it's like, where have you been all my life? I've known you forever with someone at the grocery store or <laughs> someone that I would meet and have a lover or a client. And the richness is so fulfilling in one moment in one connection is eternity and mm -hmm. feeling so safe in myself and letting them feel so safe. It's exquisite. It's just yummy and exquisite. And it even I think happens with animals. I was oh, sure. <laughs> well, I'm living in the middle of nowhere. I'm renting a property with nine horses and the horses, whenever I drive up, they're like, she's home. And they come over and say hi, like they're dogs. It's so cute. And That's I, was it. In, <laughs> I was in Jackson hole this last weekend with a girlfriend I've known for 20 years and we're in the hot tub and a moose, a moose comes over with the baby, mommy and baby, like six feet away from us. I'm like, what is going on? And it's an energy of safety and invitation and allowance and non-resistance. And people tell you things they've never told you. And to me, it's a real privilege and honor mm. that space holder for, for someone's humanity. There's oh, nothing God. beautiful to me. That's it. And, well, I, and that's why we both do our work. I mean, I follow your work and I think, yep, this is why we do the work because yeah we didn't come to it easily. It didn't just happen. There are people out there who just grow up and, and they start connecting with people and it happens sort of gently and they don't really notice. And then there are people who go through the ringer. And that's who I think most of my audience identifies with that having gone through the ringer and realized eventually one day that the common denominator is yeah. themselves. Yeah. And that's definitely where I found myself. And what I think is so fascinating is it's so easy when we're relating to imagine that the other person needs to change, that the other person needs to be different. What an interesting metaphor then the animals, because we do understand that animals don't need to change. They don't need to be different. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're, we're only going to draw to them. We're, they're only going to be drawn to us from a place of just wholeness of themselves. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a reminder to me. Yeah. Like what it feels like when somebody's drawn yeah. just out of completeness in themselves already. Yeah. Just mm. being alive gets more juicy and fun. Like I have the experience, not 24 seven, cause I get in my head and I have my moments, but making love with life. Yeah. Like I, I have this ritual in the morning. I'm getting up even earlier just to sit. There's a chair right over there where the sunrise is just to sit with nature and sit with the sunrise and, and connect more deeply. I feel the embodiment. I feel held in a way that I have never felt held by the universe. And it gives me the courage to expand and contribute and serve more because I'm not so attached to the result. If this isn't going to happen, something else is going to happen because the universe literally is in as in through me and has my back. And so long as I'm living to the best of my ability in coherence with an open heart, letting, you know, love in as in through me, it's going to be okay. It yeah. might not look like what I think. And just the other day, who was I talking to? My sales gal. And she had met somebody awesome and she's really excited. And my assistant, she's met somebody really awesome and she's really happy. I'm single. I got the horses, you know, like, no, I have none of that crazy, none of that crazy shit. But anyways, but <laughs> I was like, you know what? I have so much love to give. I think the brain thinks there's got to be someone out there for me, but what if there isn't? What if I just have a series of beautiful, rich, intimate, deep connections for the rest of my life. Is that really so bad? I'm already making love with life and God and the divine every day anyway. So it's not like I, I'm alone, but not lonely. 
and it's just lets me open to I wonder what how the universe wants to utilize my genius like have your way with me I surrender yes surrender there you go I I'm loving this and it feels so resonant to me right now so I'm I'm in the dating game right now I, I'm also married. So here's my life. I'm married and I seek multiple relationships. It's it's a long practice. We've been at this for 13 years. We've been around the block. So we have a great set of practices around jealousy and balance and figuring out what works for us. But hmm. that doesn't mean the dating apps are easy. It doesn't mean that going out there is easy. So I hear you saying, you know what? What's It's that non-attachment to the outcome that is the only option. Hmm. It. If I go out there saying I need to have, I need to fill my, my polyamorous, you know, like value pack, like what a terrible place to date from. And it was the same as a single person. Like if I'm trying too hard to look for something specific, I'm probably going to miss what I actually need. Out yeah. Of and energetically push it away because of the attachment. I love what you're yeah. saying. I don't know if you know, I'm developing a partnering app because I oh. believe that dating apps are designed to keep people single because they their business model makes money if you fail at love. Right. Yes. Yes. And so two years ago when COVID hit, my clients were saying, already I get two, three weeks, maybe two, three months into this relationship. And the first hard conversation, I'm ditched. I'm ghosted. Yep. Nobody can go deep. Nobody can keep their heart open and like stay present, sit in the fire, evolve mm-hmm. closer. Where can I find these people? And I'm like, I don't know. So I'll create it. So it's called Heartmates. Yes. The way it's all evolved has been fascinating. I'm so glad you're sharing your, your situation and your story with me because I choose to, oh, well, I love everybody. That's just that. But, and yeah. <laughs> gender identification, sexual orientation, how you choose to be monogamous, polyamorous, date with all the rest of it. So if I'm truly going to walk my talk with inclusive, there's going to be both heartmates for singles and couples yeah. in the app at one time. Yeah. And I'm going to put all the, I'm developing it right now. So the, all the questions will be about just being transparent and honest. That's so it. That when, if you're single and you're looking to have the one and you just want the one, well, that's what you'll put in your, in your profile. And if you're right. a couple wanting to improve your relationship, super duper. But if you're looking for someone else to date, like if we're just going to be honest, what a concept we're going to be <laughs> forthright. And we're going to create a, a container where everyone in this, this partnering app is doing the intimacy training. We're all mm. growing and learning. We never get there, right? Yeah. And we have these uh, live conscious connection calls once a week where we practice a dyad, which is basically you speak and the other one just says, thank you. Yeah. The purpose is to understand, not to be right, not to dominate, not to look good, not to control, but to understand and learn just to say thank you. And not justify and make excuses and all the rest of it. So this whole community is evolving with uh, the times. And I'm really proud of what we've already, we've already got the intimacy training. We've already got the live calls. Friggin' dating part is bugged. So we're still working on that, but we'll get there. We'll get there. And to be the spokesperson for transparency and this become the one to find the one, which is this Mm -hmm. one, by the way. It, so then, exactly. There's the thing. There's the thing. And to me, it doesn't matter how many, like, I, I always find it funny when people draw this delineation between monogamy and non-monogamy, when in truth, most of us are practicing lack of connection to ourselves yeah. first. And once we have that, the number of other connections you have, whether they are intimate friendships or intimate connections with your community, or mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Like we're, we're all Once we're intimately connected to ourselves, we're all capable of having multiplicity in our life. There's no one right way to design your relationship. And lots of people, actually about 25%, according to a recent national survey, are interested in some type of open relationship. But how do you know if you are ready to open up happily? Not everyone is, and that's no problem. I've got a 60 second quiz that will give you the answer. And even better, you'll walk away with your next step, whether you're good to go or not so much when it comes to opening up. And this is no BuzzFeed nonsense. I personally designed this quiz from my years of academic research. Go to joliquiz.com. That's J-O-L-I-Q-U-I-Z.com and find out if you're ready to open up happily and what to do if you are or if you're not. 
totally. It's, I mean, you know, how many people you have sex with is not, that's not the question. It's not the important part. It really doesn't even matter <laughs> at the end of the day. It's, can you be emotionally close to someone? Can you hold their truth? Can you just be present together? Yeah. And from that place, can you create agreements that honor everybody because you have the bravery to yeah. know what you know and speak up and create that? Right. I love that. Um, and also the idea of sexual partners, but also sexual energy. Because mm. to me, sexual energy isn't just bound chicka bound bow. Se- yeah. Sexual energy is care and tenderness and healing and touch with your child, with your right. friend, with your client. Like I had a a VIP before my last retreat and I thought I knew what we were going to work on. And she thought she knew what we were going to work on. I held her Mm -hmm. sobbing for 45 minutes. Yep. There you go. Never learning that one of the reasons why she's very masculine and having trouble receiving is that her mom and dad rarely held her and her husband loves her dearly and holds her, but it's always going to end up in sex. So that next level of exhale Mm -hmm. just held hadn't occurred. And so I'm just like, Oh my God. Mm. So we have this kind of sexual healing energy, Mm -hmm. the sexual energy of creation and an idea. Let's create a podcast. Let's do an interview. Let's create an app, like all this this live energy, but it's, it's this burst of energy that goes out into the world and we want it to be alive and well and flowing and blossoming in your life. And I believe sexual energy is also fierce love boundaries. Mm -hmm but not closed heart, push away, but open heart, loving clarity and being willing to stop. And if we could have that transformation from anger at another or at self into fierce love of our values, then nobody, there's no winner and no loser. Mm. We we all, we all win because we're willing to speak truth. And then of course there's all the er, delicious, erotic, naughty, yummy sexual energy as well. But then you can, put all that other energy into your, your lovemaking as well. So it's not just one, one dimensional uh, right. sexual either, where you just go for the climax and then you're done and you fall asleep. What if we let go of the goal there too? We let go of the attachment there too. And uh, just allowed the energetic flow of presence and pleasure to, yeah. to be there. Right. So yeah. I, well, done I, so I love it. <laughs> I love it. I I'm thinking now about what happens when I see clients and they are, they're struggling with what it means to be out there and experience what you just described. Um, and I've actually experienced it in the last year. I've dated 12 people who have really, as soon as it got deep, as soon as we cross the boundary and it's not always sex. Sometimes it's just that first real conversation. Yes. It's not even always a difficult conversation. Sometimes it's just the first time that they felt me see them. Yes. And then poof, just a, a, a lack. And, and so interesting for me because I have this incredibly deep connection to my anchor partner, my husband, Um, so I, I have this example in my life day to day, as well as my seven kids with these, like this, this, yeah, yeah. And they're, and they're older, they're older. So like it it, we're, you know, it's a lot of conscious relating because they're 15 to 22. Wow. So I have lots of examples of that. So I'm not in a spot where it's either, or I know that it can be both. And because I'm experiencing that poof, that disappearance, what happens when people can't tolerate the, the beauty, mm. the, that just beautiful, whatever we can't even exactly name it. It's mm. almost, I feel like I wonder, cause it feels like it's harder since the pandemic. It's almost as though we're all just so tender and it's, it's almost too beautiful to bear. Mm. Mm. You are exquisite just for shits oh. and giggles. need to make sure I say that before I forget what I want to say, what I want to say next. Thank you. Um, I believe there was the illusion a a pandemic before the pandemic of an illusion that life could somehow be certain. (laughs) Right. Yep. And clearly it can't. And the beauty and the exquisiteness of these profound moments is that you're willing to let go of certainty and be in the unknown and keep your heart open and stay present. Why? Because you have an intimate relationship with yourself come hell or high water. Even if I'm rejected, I won't reject myself. Right. Right. That's, fundamental building block. Number one of self-realization is the ability to have this intimacy with ourself and keep our heart open, knowing full well, we can't control shit. That's it. 
that's it. A total relaxation into the warm water that is, I can't control it. (laughs) No, no. Yeah. So that's my community. That's your community. Like we practice this so that when we relate on a retreat, on a group call, when I, when people do, you know, find each other in my community, it's because we've already got our own back first. Mm. We're already relating to the one, which we're looking in the mirror, which then allows you to be the space to hold this exquisite revealing of this person in front of you and you have these exquisite moments, but I would say in general, people were under the illusion that you could control life or that you could make things be certain. And the pandemic has flushed this humongous wound up that, oh my God, we can't control anything. It could change on a dime. And so all that seeking safety and seeking approval and seeking accomplishment and seeking, we're all like, it's busted. We're busted. Right. Yeah. We cannot fool ourselves anymore. And I, yet I think the temptation is there. I'm noticing when I see people getting back out there, they, there is a temptation to try to return to that consciousness, return to that. Everything can be sure. I know the facts. I know what it is objectively. And no. that temptation, it's, it's, it's so dangerous. And yeah, we, that it's, don't work. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, we've gone through all of this for nothing then. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I don't want. I think I, I was lucky. I, I was exposed to some of this before this, like, Oh, you can't know. What was your moment? How, when did it happen for you where you were like, Oh, I really have to let go of everything I thought I knew and everything I thought I control. It's a great question. And just to follow up on the last thing, I think we swung the pendulum into, Oh my God, there's nothing we can control. Holy shit. And if you don't do the work, you swing all the way to the other side and you get attached again. But those who do go, Oh, here's an invitation to do the work when I'm triggered. This means sit in the fire and evolve. I think those of us have found the center and let's be honest. If this is a bell curve of people, humanity, the, the ones that are conscious, that's just the little piece at the end. Right. Most of humanity is still fighting with addictions and control and all the rest of it. So to have compassion um, yeah. and to date wisely in the end of the bell curve where people are doing the work, have done the work and will do the work because we never yes. get there. Right? Yeah, and are are willing to understand that it is not a state to achieve. I studied Jungian psychology. You are never individuated. There is yeah. no ED at the end of that. There's just yeah, you're being. never going to get there. You're just yeah. saying, <laughs> stay in the ing. <laughs> the journey is the destination. Yeah. That's so it. I love that you asked that question because that was, I was 16 out at the lake. We had a cabin outside. I'm from Canada, from a small town in Canada. And my friends were going to arrive on the weekend. And one of the friends came down the stairs um, from the highway near where our cabin was and said, James is dead. And they, they joked with me all the time. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're just, and then her parents. And I'm like, oh, this is real. And I remember running down the yellow line of this highway, screaming, no, if I could just keep screaming. It wouldn't be real. And then my dad, um, screeching cars, etc. cetera. Um, I could hear my dad and my dad up until this point, my point of view was drunk, stoned, not there for me, not present. So this yeah. gentleman, my dad was walking down towards me and I had a, one of the biggest awakening moments of my life. He took my shoulders and he shook me and he goes, look, if this is it, if this is all there is to life and then that there's no more life, let's get off. Life is eternal. You will see your friend again. Let's get off the highway. And I was like, whoa, my dad's spiritual. And it just opened up a totally new point of view, a totally new reality. And then that night, my friends, our neighbors took me down to the provincial park to go bike riding, to try to put me in a better mood. And as we're driving home back down to where it opens out and you can see the cabins along the side of the lake on a clear blue evening, two rainbows right over my cabin. And I knew it was my friend. And the two is significant two rainbows because it's really a choice. You know, pain happens, pain happens. And we can close, wish we'd never met them, hate God for the rest of your life, like close down and do the safety thing or, okay, how can I keep my heart open in the face of anything? And I chose the second and literally my app is called heart mates, the heart my coaching program, heart splayed wide open. Like it's always been about the heart. And even my sweet dad who got all of his drugs from work, <laughs> Watts pharmacy, the little drugstore with the big heart. Like we've always been about the heart in my family, whether we have our addictions or, or not. So that was the first wake up call to realize there are no guarantees. 
Mm. And it was only two years later, I hopped on Uncle Phil's 18 wheeler semi from Canada to LA to make it in Hollywood, failed, moved to Tokyo, moved to New York, lots of fun shit went down, but it was like, no, there's no guarantee. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to say, I love you when I feel it. And I know that if I get rejected or I experience pain, I will make it through it. Yeah. I will make it through it. So thank God I got that lesson early on. Early. There's the thing early enough to gain more consciousness over time. I, I had my, I had many moments, but one didn't come one really important one didn't come till I was 33. And I have spent a lot of time wishing it came earlier, but that yeah. too is its own wasted time, right? We can only experience our wake up calls when we're ready. And that's yeah. just it. I'm wondering what do you do now to leave yourself open? Cause I heard you talking about your practices. So you get up in the morning and you make love to the universe. You're, you're there, you're available. Mm-hmm. What's another practice that you, that you do to keep that heart open? Cause it's not easy to oh, keep your no. heart open in this world. I'm a hot mess every day. I fail every day. I fall down every day. I make mistakes every day because I'm up to big things. Yeah. You don't just get on a bike and ride the very first time <laughs> you wobble a hell of a lot of time, skin, knees, the whole thing, throw the bike down the ditch. Like, you said, right. Yeah. Um, so I have quite a self-love practice with little you. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when I, after I got divorced the second time, um, my son ended up, we were in, we were in um, court for 12 years, 12, yeah. 13 years, his whole life was court. court. Um, and he accurately decided that the way to have peace was to let dad win. I'm going to mm-hmm. live with dad. And I just took the high road and relinquished my custody and, and let him live hundred percent with his dad. And I said to my staff, um, so I'm going to have a nervous breakdown from Thursday to Sunday <laughs> and Monday to Thursday I'll work, but find me a cabin in the middle of nowhere because I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and I sat on this deck of this cabin in the middle of nowhere and I would journal on the weekends, all my fears. I would get to know, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I wouldn't want to work with me because I'm not this relationship coach, it can't freaking like even keep her child. Um, and then all the way down to like, maybe I'll die alone. Mm-hmm. Like all of them, I wrote them all out and felt the feels, but then I put at the beginning and the end of the sentences, even though I may go bankrupt, die alone, Lord knows that I love and accept myself. Yeah. And I started to find all the little Alanas inside the scared, the humiliated, the insecure, the betrayed, the all the, and I started to build a relationship not to, which is what I used to do. As soon as a feeling would come up, at least I knew enough inner child work to like soothe myself, but yep. there was an agenda in yeah. order to be happy, look good, get money, get the guy like perform, was, do the thing. Yeah. 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 Thing. I'd never before gone in and loved myself. And I had this image that they were inside my heart. And then I went inside and I threw away the key. I said, no, I'm going to love you as you are forever. Even if you never change ever for eternity, like that's unconditional love, love without condition, even if this part of you never changes. And that was the key for me was like, oh, and something inside rested and aligned and then aligned and then aligned until 20 odd little Alanas and another direct experience with the divine where I don't know where I end and the universe begins and Mm -hmm. it's just pure oneness. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a practice when something comes up, maybe not in the moment, maybe I need to wait till the evening or the next morning, but I make sure I go in and I be with this part of me Mm. with no agendas, even if we're single forever, even if the app goes bankrupt, even if my dream doesn't come true to serve humanity in this way, even, 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 I will never forsake you little, little one inside my heart. That's it. I love that practice so much. It resonates with one. I I do work called inner counsel with, Mm -hmm. with my own inner parts. And when I think when, when someone finally reaches, when they reach the ability to do that, also their, their ability to hold space for their partners, whether those are long-term or short-term, whether those partners are friendships or intimate or sexual, it doesn't matter. But when you're able to do that for yourself, I find like my own container just it enlarged. Yeah. Shivers, total shivers. Yeah. 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 And mm-hmm. I, it's such a, it's such a profound difference and there's a calmness mm. in, in the connection then that I couldn't ever experience before. And, and I'm with you. It's a practice. I know I'm a hot mess. 
all the time. And I can always feel the ability to like sit back into my heels and let that container open up. And that's where it becomes beautiful to go back out dating, to go back on the apps and, and brave the heart again and, and share the, the potential, right. And, or even just like go hang out, out at Trader Joe's and just hope you get lucky squeezing a melon. It does like something, anything I from Trader Joe's once. So I, I agree. Right? Yeah. It's a great place. I think that's a, that's a particularly good one that and my local, very Christian coffee shop, good choices, surprisingly good choices for me. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my goodness. The inside creates the outside. That's how that works. And it's a magical feeling to, and it's a practice, as we said, to continue to come home to yourself. Because for me, the roots get deeper and the shoots get higher. Like I'm willing to risk more, go for it more, show up more, give myself permission to have what truly delights me more. Mm -hmm. The more I get to know myself on the inside, regardless of what happens, I, I got me, I got me. And then there's an energy people feel around you because you're not going to reject yourself. They can feel it that you're not going to reject them. You might not agree, but that's not the point. Agreement's not, not the point, point. right? Presence. And they feel safe to share things that they haven't shared with others. If you are looking for more abundance or, you know, your, your purpose or whatever, your people will feel you and want to work with you. They'll just say, I don't know what it was, but I, I saw her on a podcast right? and I, I want more of that. I'll have some of that. Right. I'll have some of that. (laughs) You, you feel it. It's real. Right. You know, you're reminding me too, that that ability to show up as yourself, it's so crucial for making real agreements in relationships. I talk about relationship agreements constantly since obviously if you're going to have more than one, yeah, you have to really get clear and transparent and you have to completely interrogate yourself all the time. Like, am I performing here? Am I, are my boundaries clear for myself? But, yes. but the ability to recognize that you, you don't have to agree with someone to make an agreement with them. Yeah, you don't, you. you don't have to, the, the agreement is in the negotiation and talking and sharing and then respecting that there can be a gap here. Yeah. And if I can, if I can be in alignment with your humanity. Yeah. And we can honor each other. We don't have to agree. It's beautiful. And it's, I mean, it's, I think it's the only way out of this polarization we're experiencing, this mm-hmm. like intense tension that we're experiencing into, right? It's supposed to feel different. We're not supposed to feel like we're living in someone else's system. We're supposed to feel yeah. at home here. Yeah. And that makes dating feel so much better. <laughs> totally. And I love what you're saying, because if you're at peace with who you are and who you're not, with your values, with what turns you on, where you're a hell yes or a fuck no. Like when you're clear Mm -hmm. about who you are, there's no need to justify. Right. There's no need to make excuses. It's why do you wear red lipstick? Cause I do like, it doesn't matter. And that ability allows you to listen better to the other, really feel and honor yourself and the other, and then create something you might never have considered before an agreement outside of your, your initial thoughts because there's no one's attached to the outcome. No one's trying to justify their position. You're truly open. And that's when I think, you know, scientifically, we know from coherence, when we're coherent, we can hear the non-local intelligence. We can hear the whisper of the divine. We can hear create creative options that normally we could never hear if our hearts are closed in, in shame of self or trying to control the other. So again, it all comes back down again to our intimate relationship with ourself. Um, and it's, right. it makes life a mystery, right? You and be open to that delight of the mystery. Yeah. Access to other ways of knowing. Yeah. I, I was, I was such a, uh, I was so committed to my thinking self that when mm-hmm. I realized that if I could finally just love myself at, like mm-hmm. at a really core level, like, and, and again, in a practice, because it's not something that's done that there would be an openness to other ways of knowing my work got better, my creativity picked up, my ability to parent creatively, which is important when you have multiple children, all needing different things, different, they all need a different mom, like not simple. And it was the access to that many ways of knowing that really allowed me to come into what I, I think of as my second half of parenting, my second half of adulthood. Oh, this is better. I wish I could have had it the whole time, but I'm so glad it's here now. Mm. So glad. But you also teach them that you grow and you evolve and you never give up. And so right. your, 
perfect from the beginning, then they'd probably judge themselves for not being perfect. Then we'd all be having a horrible time. So good for you. Tell them your evolution, your humanity, um, your ascension. I love this. It's, it is, it is so important. And I, I really, I want to honor you. I don't want to let the opportunity pass to, uh, to make the decision to allow your child to choose a peaceful route, even if it doesn't feel like the right route or it doesn't feel good Mm. is I had one of my children is it does not live with us. Mm. And, um, it's such a challenge and it's something I so rarely truly feel seen about like the choice was no nope, his mother's the right person for him to live with it's the right decision there's less fighting it's the and oof, right oh. so it can it's it's really living in the both and the this is the right decision and I can feel it in my body and it hurts yeah. and we can oh. tolerate so much more because it's actually out of love that you yes. would do that Totally. Yeah. Thank you for seeing me. Very few uh, people hear me and, um, but they've never walked in my shoes to make that decision. So they can't deeply understand. So I'm sorry, but also glad that we can get each other that way. And that's, um, that's the power of love. That's it. That's it. It's because it's beyond what feels good right now in this moment or what'll look good to other people. Hello. Right. So much judgment from others. Right. Oh, and and because it can't be about that fear. Oh, now he's going to drink the Kool-Aid too much and hate me or, oh, oh, it's, it's a litany. But right. his path is his life. That's in his choice. And he gets to own that. That's it. And I get to honor that. You get to honor that. I, I have always felt a bit of an outcast in my motherhood because um, I, I had my kids young. I started at 22, but I felt like they were always separate from me. I, I never take, I, I never take their wins as mine. And I, yeah. and I, and I also don't take their losses as like a, a direct reflection. Like they are really themselves. And as they now, now that they're, they're older, I see that the practice of that has left them able to reinvent themselves over and over again. I feel like that was a stumble. I just stumbled into it. I got lucky that mm. I was detached from their outcome that way. Yeah. but it has let me make these hard choices. And I see you like just being with that mm-hmm. and like, yeah, yeah. And this is the, it's that beautiful and awful that life is all tangled up together. Totally. But that's also life. Yeah. You know, so many people addicted to all the pleasure and the good, and let's just be positive. All, all the, the light. <laughs> yeah, right. No, life is equal pleasure and pain. Yeah. And there's beauty in the pain. Yeah. And there's detriment to a little too much pleasure. You mm-hmm. forget one of those kids at the grocery store and you're like, <laughs> totally. <laughs> you're like, Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. You know, you remind me of, um, there's this, uh, comedian and, um, uh, relationship coach, uh, Pasha Marlowe. And she says that life is brutal, brutal and beautiful. I'm like, I love that. Brutal. That's beautiful. it. Okay. It's that. Pasha. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. That's perfect. It really That's is. It. And what it helps me be is present. So I'm not attached to a result that if I finally get, I, I'll never feel pain again. No, getting out there again is going to be painful. I'm not going to lie. Once you find somebody, it's going to be painful. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. There's no escape from the pain, people. Right. So if you know that, not like um, to, to shut down or be skeptical, not for that reason, but to know that in those difficult times of dating or relationship, you will hurt But if you keep connected to yourself and lean in and sit in the fire and be with that beautiful part of yourself that is evolving, it's a phoenix out of the flame. That's why they say that, right? Yeah. And that's my nickname. You just, you just said my nickname. Yeah. My nickname is Phoenix. It has been since the day of my divorce. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, there we go. Yet another mm -hmm. round of shivers. There's another. (laughs) You get me. (laughs) I do. I do. So we, we don't date to finally be good enough or to finally soothe the loneliness or to con- prove that we're worthy. Like we don't, that's not, you're going to, you're going to fuck yourself up. Be sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. But if you're, if you're showing up because your truth aches for that experience mm-hmm. to know thyself through risk and showing up and being authentic and saying, thank you, but no, thank you. And, and finding your way. And each moment is, is enough. Each mm-hmm. moment has a gift in it. 
with whoever you meet on that dating path along the way. Every one of them has, has a gift. Yes. And if you keep connected to yourself, I like to go home and talk to my vagina. I'm like, so Yoni, how, how's, how you feel about that one? Sometimes I'll do it right in the middle of a date out in the, out in the bathroom. I'm like, oh, we just need to go to the bathroom. Check in. Like, <laughs> Okay, but he's really hot. Perfect Kegel. Okay, but he's really rich. Perfect Kegel. I'm like, okay, vagina, you you know the truth. Fine. You know. You know. Oh, she you always know. knows. She always knows. She always knows. She always knows. So that is a spiritual practice. Dating mm-hmm. could become your spiritual practice. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Speak it. I am so here. It is for me. Dating is about being in my individuation journey. It it it's part of it. I relate to people that way. And I have never known where that relationship is going to go. I, I date across the gender spectrum and across the sexuality spectrum. And it's, it's about not saying the limit will be here because I happen to be married for me. And so it is a spiritual practice and a practice of letting go of letting go over and over and over again, not because it couldn't be forever, but because nothing is forever except, you know, us and all of it. It's yeah. either all forever or not forever. It doesn't even matter to me anymore. And mm-hmm. dating is a beautiful container to explore that through. And now I'm super curious. So tell the audience as we wrap, we're wrapping up, but I, I, I have to be able to put them in touch with you. How do they get in touch with your community? Because clearly you have created a space where people are experiencing something remarkable. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Um, one thing about what you just said, and then I'll give you all the ways you can, we can play together. Um, while you choose the, the exploration through dating in my practice, it was probably a bit a good 10, 15 years ago, but I decided, Oh, fuck it. I'm just going to love everybody. Like, <laughs> or it was like, well, on session number one, we do this. And on session number two, we do that. And then, and then I just realized when I just let go and just loved them. And while I don't sleep with them, I, every other way of being in my sexual energy and I'll flirt mm-hmm. with them for sure. Um, or hold them or, or what have you. When I just let myself love them, it was, it was quantum leap, uh, nonlinear jump transformation. Cause it wasn't me anymore. It was the universe using me for them. I didn't need to get it right or be in control. I was just the facilitator of transformation and I was willing to go anywhere and stay present with them. And it's just been ever since business, my courage, everything is just uh, exponentially exploded. And it's really like people will say, I watched a video of yours or a podcast. And so how do I sign up? And I'm like, don't you want to talk about like when like, oh, no, I'm in, oh, I just want to be around you. I'm like, okay. And it's true. And this is the humbling part. When we do the work, our inner, just our energy is transformational. Yeah. I can literally be in a grocery store or at a restaurant and just listen And right before me, I I say shit, nothing. And they transform right before me. And they're like, this was the best conversation ever. And I never see them again. Like I didn't even even say anything, (laughs) but the energy, the listener is the power, the power position Mm -hmm. in, in a communication. It's your capacity to listen without judgment is transformational. And if we can all be this for each other and humanity, that's what changes the world. Okay. So that's why it's so important to do this work. So love to play with all of you. Um, some, some ways. Um, and I'd love to have you on my podcast. Yes. We have to talk more. Yeah. So that's intimate conversations, um, podcast, YouTube channel, thousands of videos, millions of views, you know, just put in there, whatever your topic is. And I'm sure some great videos will come up on my site, uh, is an intimacy blind spot assessment because Mm -hmm. we're all on the path. We do the work, but I can't fucking see my blind spot to save my life. (laughs) Nobody can the nature of it. (laughs) Yeah, that's the nature of it. But I've developed a way for you to go, oh, that's really what's running the show, Mm -hmm. which is just awareness. We still need to do the work, obviously, but at least we don't have to keep spinning in our head or abusing ourselves with what's wrong with me. You're like, oh, it's that. Okay. Now I can, I can work on that. I can, I can evolve process, integrate that. So that quiz is there. And then also please become a member of our HeartMates community. The curriculum's there. The live conscious connection calls are there. And in about six months, the inclusive dating app portion will be there where you, whatever your choice is, transparently, you will meet like-minded, like-hearted people. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then from there, my reality show will ensue where my job is to go around loving you and show up on your doorstep with a six pack or whatever, and just say, Hey, the dating app says you've had 10 first dates and no second first, no second dates. Oh yeah. Wing girl, wing girl let's go out. Right. Uh-huh. Or, oh, you just went from heartmates for singles into heartmates for couples. 
Have you had your first fight? Let's do some talking about how to resolve conflict. It's a good thing. It's how we yeah. grow. Or I've noticed you're, you're not even on the dating portion. You're just doing the, the conscious connection calls. Are you afraid to get hurt again? Mm. You're going to. So yeah. let's work through that now so that you can be free and liberated and connect with people. And so that's my love, love, love is to be able to get out and do that. Once I get all of this foundational stuff, uh, you know, humming. <sighs> I love it. I love it because that that's what that's what reality TV is for too. Like that's what it's, so. that's its real purpose. Every once in a while we see a show that shows us that. Like, oh, we're all just humans on a ride together. Here oh, we yeah. are. Let's yeah. show up for each other. And yeah. I am honored to be in your company because I don't think I rarely meet somebody who who states out loud that they love their clients. And that's exactly what I do. That's what my 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 transformative um, analyst did for me. He, he loved me. He loved me. He's, he just looked me dead in the eye and said, I love you. He's 90. He was 93 at the time. And he just looked me dead in the eye and said, I love you until I believed him. And it wow. broke my heart open. Oh. And wow. I think you're, you're living that, that transformative mm-hmm. power. It's, and it's irreplaceable. Thank you. Yeah. And people feel it. And if I didn't love this one, all the wobbly parts and all the inner work, I couldn't love their wobbly right. parts. I would judge and fix and improve and whatever, but right. not just, it is actually, that doesn't even work. That's just sprinkles on top of the ice cream cone of shit that, you know, right. doesn't do, doesn't do shit, but me literally unconditionally loving them until they do mm. like, like I have. Um, and, and my mentors and teachers have like, that's the key. That's it. That's yeah. what there is. Well, thank you so much, so much this for has joining been delicious. us. This, delicious. So <laughs> yummy. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Alana. Oh, I really appreciate it. Me. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. I have one more thing to share with you. If you want to pop over to listen to Jolie.com, that's just listen to Jolie, J O L I.com, you can grab my top five relationship guides for free right now. Yeah, get the guides. They're easy to implement conversations that will empower you to create the love you want. It's my mission to make everything talk aboutable. Sex, love, losses and learns. Everything is talk aboutable. <laughs> she managed to help me be able to talk about stuff that I once couldn't even imagine saying out loud. Now I speak openly with my lovers, my friends, my family and you all on a podcast out loud. Relationship work really can change everything. So when you're feeling the rough edges, when things aren't going the way you'd hoped, remember relationships can be messy and that's good news.